Uh, hello one and all. Um, I thought I would uh, create a quick video on the control board that I've put together for the drop art project. Um, this is uh, said control board. Um, I, I, I like to sort of go over it as a, as a video. Um, it's all very well uh, people sort of um, looking at a schematic but um, as I say it's, it's, it's a lot easier to explain what's going on um, in, in, in a video. Um, now there does look like there's quite a lot of parts going on here but it's all it's all fairly straightforward when you when you break it down um, so this is generally the way I tend to uh, build a prototype um, I do almost always use this type of prototyping board um, it's pretty cheap it's sort of about a pound or a pound fifty for one of these boards buy them in packs of ten um, it, there's no um, it's just through hole plated holes uh, with a 2.54 mil pitch standard pitch for uh, dual in line packages um, you've got kind of um, tag strip either side what I tend to do is on the other side of the board as I run a power rail um, down one side and the uh, ground rail down the other and then I can just um, wire stuff up um, either way um, so right let's think about this so the best way to go through this is probably well Okay, well, let's just start with the um, with the with the power. So here we have a 2.5 millimeter uh, standard um, board mounting power socket. Um, no switch, just straight socket, um, and that's basically feeding this little arrangement up here, which is um, a five volt power supply. Um, I, I'm I'm powering the whole board from. I usually power my boards from a little 12 volt sort of wall cube. Um, you need 12 volts to fire the um, the solenoid, which um, actually drops the liquid. So um, 12 volt has to be an input anyway. So this little arrangement up here is just a couple of input capacitors, uh, a small 78LO5 uh, voltage regulator, and then a couple of output capacitors. So basically 12 volt in through a uh, reverse polarity protection diode, um, and then uh, then basically the whole of the board minus the solenoid is being powered from this little um, 5 volt power supply okay so that's the power supply um, now I suppose the the main main component on the board is the pick so this is the pick um, microchip 18f 2550 uh, microcontroller It's in a 28 pin dual inline package um, I've got a couple of sort of favorite picks everybody that writes pick stuff tends to have like a pick of choice um, if I need a USB interface which this particular project did then I tend to pick this part or or its larger cousin which is the uh, 4550 which comes in a 40 pin package is basically the same part but just with more IO and a couple of other extra features on the larger part but I didn't need that much IO so I've just got stuck with the 2550 28 pin dual in line um, I won't now attempt to explain all the features of this pick because it comes in about a 300 page manual um, and you use what feature I mean, I'm using as I say the on it has an onboard hardware USB module um, which runs the microchip or a version of the microchip uh, USB software stack which gives you USB 2 connectivity um, and it works really well um, there's a whole bunch of other, I mean, I'm, because this project uses um, sort of timing, um, you know, trying to time these drops accurately in terms of size and interdrop duration, I'm using onboard hardware timers to achieve that. So the hard hardware timers run and then create um, hardware interrupts. And then using that mechanism or that methodology, I, I can achieve extremely accurate timing um, down to sort of like, you know, um, microseconds or sub microsecond timing the, this particular pick um, does have an onboard oscillator you can run it from the onboard oscillator I, I tend not to I, I'm running it from an external crystal so this is a four megahertz crystal um, that you know they pick them up from basically peanuts and it's associated little tank caps that make it all oscillate the <coughs> excuse me the onboard frequency of the pick is actually 32 megahertz so this this um, crystal is acting as the uh, input or the resonant part of a, a PLL which is a, a phase lock loop I mean I won't basically a, a phase lock loop is a way of creating a phase synchronous clock a, a higher or lower frequency from a base clock so 4 meg and then the internally it runs at 32 meg the instruction set for the processor runs at a 
that's that frequency, that 32 meg is referred to as F, F, F OSC. Um, the actual instruction uh, rate is a quarter of that, or F OSC over four. So the the PIC is actually running uh, instructions at 16 MIPS or 16 million instructions per second at a 32 clock, 32 meg internal clock rate. Okay, all that, all good. Um, what else have we got? So that's the little crystal in its caps. This is quite an important little capacitor here. Looks fairly innocuous, but it's quite important. Uh, there's an onboard power supply for the uh, USB, um, and it requires a, an external capacitor, <clears throat> a hundred or a couple of hundred nanofarad capacitor, and this is it. So without that capacitor fitted to a USB ref, the USB interface won't won't work. So that's actually quite important that that gets fitted. Um, I've got some test points here. These are these these test points are just the uh, test points connected to um, the, the the shutter flash and the uh, solenoid, so I could connect my oscilloscope um, and uh, check the check the timings before I had anything else sort of um, connected. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, these packages here, these long thin packages, these are resistor arrays. I find these extremely useful to use when prototyping because otherwise the board can get quite messy with lots of resistors all over the place. Um, these uh, particular ones here are um, contain uh, four resistors each as an eight pin package, uh, four isolated resistors which are being used for LED uh, current limiting. Um, for the onboard LED and also the LEDs within these packages that I'll discuss in a minute. And then this black package over here is a similar um, resistor array, but it's got a common tap. So you've got um, all the resistors are, are common to one point uh, and that's being used for pull-ups. Um, things like um, the um, I squared C serial interface need pull-ups and other, other other um, the the other things need pull up, so this is quite it's just a so there's like you know there's 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 eight resistors in there and four in there and four in there, so it's just a way of making the board tidier and it's just more convenient. And to be honest, they're just they're cheaper than buying the individual resistors. Uh, what else have we got? Okay, here we have got the rotary control. This is a, a two bit gray code gray coded rotary control. I've used these quite a lot. It's also got a center button, so you have got. Um, yeah, two two bit grey coded. So you've got two, a pair of signals that go high and low in a particular sequence, depending on whether. You, and by detecting that sequence, you can tell the PIC can tell the software and the PIC can tell w how far you've moved the control and in which direction you've moved it in. They're really useful um, and they're really cheap. So I use those a lot. They they used all they're used in lots of things, car radios, and this, that's why they're cheap because they make billions of the things. Okay, so that's the rotary and call. This is the this is these little buttons are quite useful. They're all, I, just, I use these quite a lot because they fit the board. Um, they're just um, push to make buttons. Uh, that's that one is the one to release the drop or start the drop release sequence. This one you wouldn't ne necessarily normally fit on a, on a certainly on a production board because this is the this is just to reset the um, the microprocessor. Just easier and better than pulling the power. I just push this and it resets the processor and restarts the software. So I just fit that. There's a little heartbeat LED here. I've, um, that doesn't really serve any particular purpose other than the, it, the, the, the PIC software flashes it at about one hertz. It's just a feel good factor. It doesn't say it doesn't, you don't have to fit it. It just, while, while it's flashing, I know the PIC software is running without having to sort of go any further. If it's flashing, the software is running, simple as that. This little red LED here is the USB connection establishment LED. So basically when this is on, the USB is not connected. And when you plug the USB into the PC and it enumerates, um, that's detected in the PIC via the USB stack. And then I turn the LED off. Okay, what else have we got here? Okay, so um, what we've got here is the it's a USB connector. Um, we've got the connector for the solenoid, um, the connector for the camera shutter, and the connector for the flash. Those observant among you will have noticed I've used exactly the same 3.5 millimeter mono, mono jack socket. So you've got to be a little bit. I've got to be a little bit careful. I don't plug the wrong thing. I don't the wrong thing into the wrong hole. You know, if obviously if this was a if this was a proper production unit, I wouldn't have used the same connectors. I would have used some different connectors. You couldn't accidentally say plug your camera into a 12 volt output, but you know. I'm just being careful and I just happen to have the connectors lying around so I've used them. Okay, now these little beasts here, these two little white ones here, these are opto-couplers. Um, I'll explain these, these have caused confusion in the past. 
inside one of these packages is a, 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 is basically an LED. You can imagine there's three pins on one side and three pins on the other. The three pins on the left or two of the pins on the left hand side are basically connected to an internal LED. Um, the three pins on the right are connected to an internal photosensitive transistor. So when you um, when you illuminate the LED by powering it from the pick, um, that basically um, uh, turns on the transistor. So you think, well, why, why, why do you do that? Well, the reason I do that is because these, opt these optically isolate. The, they're not electrically coupled left to right. So I can plug my, you know, my camera, my flash, um, into um, into into this side of these isolators, and they're not electrically coupled to the rest of the circuit. So if something goes horribly wrong with this board, um, for whatever reason, it's unlikely to damage, the, say, the camera, which is the you know I'm not too worried about the flash, but the camera, you don't want to be accidentally shoving 12 volts up it. Um, so um, something can, horrible can happen on the left hand side of the isolator, and it and it and it can't bridge the gap to the Electric, the optically isolated side. So there's one opto isolator um, for um, firing the camera shutter. There's one opto isolator for um, the the second opto isolator. Well, sorry, this opto isolator is coupled to this part here. This is a um, quite a high current. It's overkill. I just have I've got a load of them lying around, so I just tend to use them. It's a, just a P channel FET. Um, I'm using this is the switch to switch the 12 volts to the um, solenoid. So this little part here is not capable of switching the sort of this, these solenoids are like half an amp when they're on. Um, that little opto isolator is not capable of driving half an amp. So th this little opto isolator is basically switching this large. This is a 10 amp FET. Um, it you know it can switch this solenoid and doesn't even know it's there, which is why I've not even bothered with the heatsink. Uh, and it's also got a very low dropout of only a, you know a few tens of uh, few tens of milliohms. So you don't lose much voltage across it. So basically, the opto isolator switches a FET, the FET, FET switches a solenoid, simple as that. This um, opto isolator is, is switching the camera shutter directly. This is not an opto, well, it is an opto isolator, this is an opto triac. So we've got an LED one side and a triac the other. The reason I've done that is because this is going to be switching the flash, not directly, I'll come to that, but it's the triac has got about a 5,000 volt isolation rating. So some flash guns, especially older flash guns, can have very high voltages on their uh, trigger inputs. Um, so you want something with a high degree of isolation. So let's say this has got about a five kilovolt rated isolation across it. Again, it's, it's not switching the flash directly. It's driving this little fella. This is um, a... Um, a TLS 106, this is a thyristor. This again is capable of switching, um, well, again, it's massive overkill. I just had some, uh, this is capable of switching to sort of 400 volts or four amps. Um, so this is actually firing the flash. This opto triac is firing the thyristor. You can see all this on the schematic. So what else have we got? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Ah, this little row of connectors here is the programming header for the, for the pick. Um, so I program. I, I tend to program my picks using a, um, a credit card size sort of programmer called a Pick Kit Three. You can get them on the internet. They're really cheap. They're about ten quid. And you just plug it in there. It's got USB one side and a programming header the other. Uh, basically, it's just power. There's one pin's not used. Power and ground, and then the um, you got a reset pin, and then the other two pins. The other two pins go to the top two most pins on the pick, twenty seven and twenty eight, which are the Power and gra uh, power and clock pins for the programming. Um, you could, well, we can also reprogram the, the pick using a bootloader. I'll do that in a separate video, which allows you to reprogram the pick over the USB without using a specialist programmer. Um, yeah, I think that probably just about covers everything. We just have a quick think. I can't think of anything. Oh, sorry, <laughs> missed that one very the major important part. Uh, this little header up here, uh, this is power, ground, clock and data, which is I squared C or a serial serial based interface, uh, which is connected directly to the PIC. And this is what drives the um, LCD display. So um, the, I've put some four posts here for the LCD. Here's the LCD. These are really nice, and again, they're really, really cheap. I mean, they're like three or four pounds because they make millions of the things. Uh, it's four line by 20 characters. 
really nice bright display what originally these displays they've got a particular chipset an atashi chipset on them um and that these original displays were um were, were parallel by that i mean you've got you know you've got a load of data pins here and you've got you know so you'd have to you'd have to connect they're sort of old school you'd have ended up connecting them to the processor using a parallel port and that's fine you can do that but obviously it burns a lot of general purpose io from the processor if you've only got 28 pins to start with and you've got to burn eight of them so what um, has happened is that these displays you can now buy for i say i bought 10 for a fiver um, where's my pencil you can buy these little interface boards um which solder onto the parallel interface and give you uh basically a serial to parallel conversion so rather than having to burn all these pins up you only you all you need is you just power the board with power and ground so there's four pins power and ground and then you've got clock and data i squared c serial interface which connects to the processor so you basically most of these little pick processors have got an i squared c or a serial interface built in you can hook it directly to the to the display and with a suitable firmware driver you can you can set the display up without burning loads of io so basically what happens is this this display drops onto these posts and then this pin header here plugs into that four pin socket and that's all you need and it gives you a whole character display that i think is about it um I'll just, i could just quickly spin it over i suppose and show you the underside it's not pretty um get it square uh, i tend to build my boards all in exactly the same way say so i've got a bus bar running down this side which is ground i've got a bus bar running this side which is plus five volts uh, and there's the power supply up there and then i tend to use this uh mod wire it's a single 0.25 millimeter a uh, single solid core silver coated um, and it's specifically designed for um, this type of sort of rat's nest wiring. It's very strong, very easy to use. You can bend it a lot and it doesn't snap. Um, and it's got a very high sort of conductivity because it's silver coated. So, um, yeah, just tend to rat's nest it like that. You know, it takes maybe an hour or two to wire it all up. Job's good. And so um, there we go. There's the control board. Any questions, um, fire away. Um, thank you very much for watching. Cheers.